two, three. Let's run, 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 run. Let's drink our potion. Hello and welcome to another episode of Regrowth Reloaded. Okay, today is the day we are going to try to take on the Wither. Uh, again, I am not a very good combat player, so I don't know how well this is going to go. I've never really fought a Wither before or the Ender Dragon or anything like that. I've just never kind of avoided that part of the game. Um, I did try fighting the Wither once, but it didn't go very well for me, and, and I wound up getting rid of him <laughs> a different way. Uh, but uh, we're going to try to do that today, um, and we're going to do it as honest as we can here. So, But before we do that, I wanted to show you that I went ahead and I did find a way to um, automate the rolling machine. So I had to set up four different rolling machines here. This one does osmium, this one does iron, this one does titanium, and this one does steel. Um, and it's actually a fairly easy setup. It just requires the, um, the rolling machine and a single um, uh, uh, interface. And then I'll just go around the back here, just kind of show you what it looks like from back here. There's an import bus and an export bus. And I'm using smart cables coming up here just so I could kind of figure out how many channels this whole thing does. And, the, and I've got two of them combined together in here and two over there. And the, com the combined of the two of them are using six of our eight channels out of that one smart cable. So on the top here we have um, the uh, export bus, which is uh, doesn't have anything in it. But that goes into the top of the interface. And then in the back of the rolling machine itself is an import bus. And there's nothing in that either. So that's pretty much it. So you just have your cable coming attached to the top with your, your export bus into the, and then it goes into the back of your interface as well. And then it goes down and it connects into the rolling machine with an import bus in there. And the import bus pulls the product out and puts it back into your system, where the export bus pulls it out of your system and sticks it into the interface, which then feeds it into your rolling machine. Um, I have these um, cable anchors in between just because I do not want these cables to connect together. Only down here at the bottom where you know we're just feeding the power across. Um, and then I just replicated the same thing here. Now with your rolling machines, uh, the good thing about them is they will always leave one craft left in here. Um, otherwise, it wouldn't know how to set it up. So you just put in what you want. So that's why I had to do four rolling machines, one for each of the types of the plates that we use the most. So I've got the osmium set up in here like this, and then the iron and so on and so forth. So that's how it works. So if you just come over here and you can... Uh, you know, request, you know, iron plates. Um, let me uh, come back in, just look at craftable only so we can craft iron plates and it will do its thing. I don't need any right now. I, I've got several in the system, uh, but that's easy enough to do. Then you just make your uh, template and you put it in here in your interface. So there's the encoded pattern for the these particular plates. And that's all there is to do on that. Okay, uh, enough dilly-dallying. Let's uh, see if we can do this um, thing here. Uh, I put away my um, quest book. It's in this chest over here. So let me go ahead and grab that real quick. And let's take a look and um, I do that uh, yeah uh, click 
here to start. One quest with unclaimed rewards. Oh yeah, I've got that too. Uh, let me do that real quick. That was in chapter 14 because uh, we made the um, Rhodey Condensing Trader in order to do that. And that's going to give us two more of them and a couple of upgrades. So pick one. Uh, let's go ahead and do speed upgrades. All right, so we did the Rotary Condensing Trader in order to get the lithium that we needed for the last thing. But if we come back into, um, which one is it? Um, the way the world, uh, it's not that one. It's not how the world grows, is it? Yes, it is. Um, I'm pretty sure it's here. That's. Somewhere, and we don't want to do that thing. Oh, where is it? I thought it was in here. Because, yeah, it's part of this um, quest line. What eventually, it's going to ask us to defeat the Wither and then go after the Ender Dragon. And, and I thought it was in here somewhere. It's uh, the kettle. Uh, yeah, we're gonna have to get back into witchery because we got a lot of stuff that we need to do but anyways let me go ahead and put this away put this stuff away and as you can see I've got a few things in my inventory I'm gonna go ahead and use the the cutlass that we made um, because that does 22 attack damage um, I'm gonna to try to use this, the crossbow as well um, And then we got the iron bolts. They do eight attack damage on each of those. I am going to take the Terra blade as well um, I've got these uh, magical potions that we got in a quest now these have fire resistance, water breathing, strength 2, regeneration, night vision, and speed, all of 25 minutes. Uh, well, the water breathing isn't going to help us any, but uh, everything else should help us a little bit. Um, you'll also notice that I'm using regular baked potatoes instead of the magical crops, and there's a good reason for this. If you're using these potions that give you the regeneration, and then you eat magical food, it will overwrite this re regeneration with the five seconds of regeneration that you get from the magical food. So rely on this one and just use regular food. Okay, then of course I've got wither skeleton skulls. We can craft those. I've got a chest, I've got some milk, I've got the soul sand. So let's um, head on out to the area that I've got this set up for. Let's see if it's okay. It's still daytime out. Almost nighttime. Let me uh, sleep real quick, and then I'll be right back with you. All right, let's uh, get moving now. Um, gonna head over actually to our hidey hole that we had crafted in or created in our very first episode. So let's go ahead and close this up here. The hidey hole is still over here. Looks like the Endermen have been busy again. Oh, they drive me crazy. And as you might recall, we had these tunnels that went all the way down and we found a cave that actually had those um, uh, essence berry bushes in there. And I lift this up a little bit oh, it looks like I got another one of those things here I need to get rid of those it's that stupid mod that I installed I'm pretty sure did that where I'm every once in a while you find these um, end portals just laying around and I don't want to accidentally walk into it we're not ready to go to the end yet so I have to go into um, creative and destroy the end portal frame all right so i got this area way down here at bedrock i kind of hollowed out a little area here and i'm very nervous about this so 
let me go ahead and get the soul sand down anyways. I think I'm gonna, and let me do this too. I've got a little tunnel off to the side here. I'm gonna go ahead and put down this chest. I'm gonna put extra stuff in here. Keep one bucket of milk on me just in case. Now I don't want to use the milk if I don't have to because that will, of course, do away with our potion effects. But uh, uh, let's see. One. Well, that attached to the wall. It looks like. Oh, of course it did. There we go. Two, three. Let's run, 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 run. Let's drink our potion. Was a bit anticlimactic. <laughs> okay, well, uh, yeah. Let me pick this junk up and, uh, yeah, I guess i um, pick up my stuff and I'll meet you back at uh, the, the house. Okay, so that was um, over. Pretty quick, wasn't it? <laughs> I, I, I didn't imagine it, it would uh, be that short of a fight, but you know, that's good, I guess. I mean, uh, I guess I did it right. <laughs> so uh, let's go ahead and put this stuff in here. Um, and I'm probably gonna eventually do a couple more battles with, with the Wither um, because we did get a, um, of course, we've got our Nether Star, which we're gonna need to. Um, uh, craft a, a beacon for and that's going to be necessary for the um, Gaia Guardian battle, but we also managed to get a, um, a Yellow heart out of it. So let's see what it takes to make a uh, yellow heart canister Yellow heart canister so it takes a red heart canister a yellow heart and a golden apple now that is that's the magical one that's a notch apple now I do have a red heart canister um, I did get another red heart from my mob farm so let's um, come in here and let's we need eight blocks of gold and an apple let's go ahead and do that ourselves a notch apple over here and let's look this back up again yellow heart canister got everything there and boom oh I still got the red heart canister really okay so let's go ahead and uh, get this applied to our self then. We've got uh, 10 red hearts, we've got one green heart, now we've got a yellow heart. That should take us up to uh, 22 hearts of, uh, yeah, so we're up to 22 hearts now, so that's pretty good. So, um, this has been a whole whopping 17 minutes of me recording. Some of it I've cut out. Let's um, take a quick look in here, I guess, in our quest book. Uh, see if there's anything in here. Uh, let's see, all quests complete, anything. Let's go back. Does this show anything? No, we, don't, we didn't um, get anything there. 
How about, let's see, we go back into, no, that's, uh, uh, let's see, Life of the World, no, let's take a do the Witch's Robes, How the World Grows, that's the one we wanted. Let's um, come up here and I want to take a look at guard tree and the reason I want to do this one is because this is going to uh, help us uh, move towards um, foam craft. Witches have been long known to grow tree fids as guards for their homes. You think it's time you joined in on the practice. Once planted, a tree fid seed will grow rapidly and act as a loyal guard for the area near its planting. Normally they will wander about when not attacking, but this behavior can be changed using a bowling. Feeding the tree fid the heart of a creeper or a demon will increase its strength and health. Normally tree fids will attack anything or anyone who are not their owners, but taglock kits can be given to them to prevent them from attacking the taglock creatures. So to craft a tree fit seed. Let's take a look at this. We need uh, Mutandus Extremis, which we haven't done yet. Uh, Rika Misfortune, Tear of the Goddess, Water Artichoke, Mandrake Root, and Ember Moss. So we're going to have to um, put that on the back burner for a moment because we need to um, come up here, I guess, into more mutation. Yes. Some plants are still unable to be mutated using simple mutandus, but you found a way to create a more potent version of the stuff and bind it with some other magics to be even more potent. Uh, making mutandus extremist requires about 50 power from a nearby altar. Well, we've got over 10,000 power on our altar, so we're good here. So let's take a look at the mutandus extremis, and that is a nether wart and mutandus in a witch's cauldron. Do I have any mutandus in the first place? I don't have any in the system. So let's see. Do we have we should have everything we need to make it. Mandrake root, bone meal, wood ash, and green dye. Do we have any wood ash in the system? I don't think we have it here. Wood ash. No. Let's uh, run out to our witchery area and grab some wood ash. It's nighttime, so let's sleep real quick. All right, so. We'll just do the Mutandus Extremis. Um, I'm going to have to make a few more, uh, it looks like, in order to get the tree fit seeds, and hopefully we'll be able to do those in the next episode. So let's go ahead and get some wood ash from here. Wood ash. How much do I have in there? I have 199. Let me just go ahead and grab a stack of it. What do we need for that? That was green dye and uh, let's see, do we have mandrake root? Yeah, let me grab a stack of that. Green diamond, bone meal. Let's look at the recipe again. Mutandus. Regular mutandus, okay. Yeah, so I've got to get the rest of the stuff from over in our base. And I'm probably going to wind up putting a line over here too that ties into our ME system so that we can access this stuff from anywhere we want to. I'm just going to have to make some more cables to go underground. All right. Let's come over here. You can this. Let's see how much of this stuff we can do. Three. Go ahead and toss that in there, and that in there. 
45. Okay, that should give us plenty of mutandus for a while. All right, so the mutandus extremis was uh, nether wart. Let's go ahead and grab a stack of that. I want to see if that thing is going to work, the Everfull Urn. Let's take that with us. If it doesn't, then since we're here, let's go ahead and get our Rod of the Seas and take that with us. Let's head back over to our cauldron. All right, let's put down the Everfull Urn and let's see if it does its trick here. Now it doesn't appear to want to fill the witch's cauldron either. pickaxe on me, but hopefully I don't break it. I'm just going to leave it here. I'll get my pickaxe so I can get that later. So let's see. Oh! Do, 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 do. Ah. Okay. <laughs> Oh my goodness, what a mess. Oh, I'm gonna have to come back out here and rebone meal this area a little bit. Wonder if it knocked our altar power down too much. Eh, not too much. All right, um, okay, um, let me, uh, go get uh, a bucket and, um, uh, I'll be right back. All right, let's, uh, go get some water. It takes three buckets to fill this thing up, so. I tried the rod again, same thing. So I guess it can't be used on that, which stinks, but, oh well. I could, if I wanted to, set up um, a pump and then pump water directly into the uh, the vat or the cauldron. I know that that works. It also works the same for the kettle too when we need to do that. But all right, so let's uh, come back in here and we're going to look at the mutandus extremis again. Mutandus extremis. And this is Netherwort and Mutandus in a cauldron. So, and I believe the order matters. So you want to throw in one Netherwort and one Mutandus. Stand back. And let it do its thing. And there we go. We got one Mutandus Extremis. Okay, so that's how the cauldron works. So I'm going to have to do this a few more times, get a bit more mutandus extremis uh, so that we can do our some other quests with it in uh, the next episode or two. Okay, well that's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I had a good time fighting the wither. It was actually uh, it was a little stressful, but it wasn't that difficult um, as far as um, you know modded's concerned. I'm, uh, I know it's a lot harder in vanilla, but uh, we did get it. Um, I'm probably going to have to fight him several more times um, it, for uh, to get some more of those um, yellow hearts for yellow heart canisters, and uh, we may need. Uh, nether stars for other things in the future as well. So, until next time, this is Desert Rat. Have a good one. Bye.